Hey everybody, welcome back to Woodworker 631. I'm Brian. And I'm Mark. Come join us as we build this unique, elegant lamp. Join us. Hello everybody, welcome back to our shop. In this video series, we're going to be building this bird's eye maple lamp. The entire construction, frame, and veneers is bird's eye maple. We got the idea from Fine Woodworking Magazine, issue number 222. I believe it came out around the year 2006. You can go on Fine Woodworking's website and buy the DVD archive, which is what I got, which basically every magazine they made from, I don't know, from the 70s to today is on there. You just type in a keyword, I put in lamp, and this is what came up. So this is what we're gonna be building. Um, it was, uh, the design is uh, Christian Bexports. I don't wanna claim it from mine, it's not. Like I said, we, we got the idea from the magazine. And if uh, you're worried about building this, you think it's too complicated, uh, it's very simple. It, it might look kind of complicated now, but the, uh, the overall build is a simple build. Uh, we're going to, in this video, make it as simple as possible in, the, in this two-part series. Uh, you can also find the instructions uh, from the uh, DVD archive as well. So um, come join us as we build this elegant lamp. It's pretty cool, huh? Alright guys, we're at the table saw, we're going to cut half lap joints in the top cross pieces. What we did is we set up a dado blade, move in here Mark, Absolutely. at a quarter of an inch. Now this has to be three eighths of an inch by, by a quarter inch in height. So what we did is we offset the cut a little bit, so after we make our first cut, we flip the piece around, cut it a second time, it's going to be dead center, and they're going to fit together like this. So let's get to work. Let's see if they fit. 
Voila, the miracle camel. Oh, yeah, let's uh, get a close up of that. Nice. All right. Yeah. Now we'll move to the bottom piece. We'll do the bottom cross pieces. Let's go. All right, we have the two bottom cross pieces. We're going to do the same thing as the top cross pieces. We set the dado blade up a little thicker, and we set it up thinner than what we need to be so we can make our first cut, turn the piece around, make the second cut. It'll put a center and our heights, and everything will fit together nice. So let's cut. Glasses. Well, here the dado stack is still set up thick. We're going to cut the tenons, which are going to be for where the pieces slip into the base here. What we did is set it up. Uh, the tenon depth is uh, 15 sixteenths of an inch by 3 eighths square. So, what you can do is we're going to do our first pass shallow, then push to the fence, and finish the tenon out. So, let's go. Close Got it right there. Yep. Three eighths square by 15 sixteenths in depth. I'll cut the other two off camera. Okay, we're going to cut the tenon detail on the top rails. Um, the tenon is going to be one and nine sixteenths of an inch deep, actually long, and then it's going to be one and one eighth of an inch wide. When we're done, we're going to put it together, we'll mark it, and we're going to cut a curve on the end of it. But for now, let's cut the tenon. them a little wide on purpose so I can uh, take a shoulder plane and take them down to size when we fit them into the, uh, into the rails. Okay, we took out the tenon and Jake can set it up on the saw to cut the slots in the posts. On the other end of the post is the tenon that goes into the base. The slot is to hold the top. Slot top tenon. All right. We also set the blade up, one eighth inch, it's one eighth inch cut, the blade is slightly smaller so we set it a little off so we can cut it, flip it, cut it again and it will be centered in the piece. We're going to gang them up two at a time because they're kind of small and use a backer stick when you're doing this so you don't have tear out on the other end of the uh, slot on the good piece. That's it, let's cut. and see how it fits. There you go. And we're going to cut a detail, we'll curve, before we glue it up. 
Okay. All right, guys, it's time to put the mortises in the base. Now, the base is a little bigger than the top cross pieces. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to take measurements from the top cross piece to mark out, mark out on, the, on the base. So this is what we're going to do. Come in close, Mark? Sure. What we're going to do is put the two cross pieces together and find your center and mark it. Then slide the, the, the post onto the tendon, find center of that, and mark that. Then what you're going to do is take your compass from here to here, and you're going to find your spot. That's preset. Now you're going to take that, you're going to go to your base, you're going to find center, all right, with the X. You're then going to take your compass, and you're going to mark the center of your mortise on each one. Then you go to the drill press, hide out the waist, like we did here, and then you can take your 3 8 mortise and chisel and chop it out. Or if you have a hollow chisel mortise like we do, you can chop them out. What we're going to do is we're going to finish up this one here, chop in the old fashioned way, and then we'll do the other two on the hollow chisel mortise. Sight down here to make sure that you're plumb. All right, now we finished with that. Chop the mortise. That's one way of doing it, the old-fashioned way, old school. With hammer and chisel. Now let's go new school. Let's go with the mortiser. All right, guys, we hand cut these mortises in that bottom cross piece. This one we're going to cut on a house chisel mortiser right now. Real easy to use. If you have one, great. If you don't, it's worth the investment. I wouldn't get the uh, bench top version. I would get the uh, floor version. It's a little more power. So let's cut them. Much faster, much cleaner, modern technology is great. Okay, now that the mortises are cut in our base, we need to size our tenons to fit them. Now we roughly cut these to 3 eighths of an inch square, but we're always a little lower. And you can see it doesn't fit. So this allows us to use a shoulder plane to fine tune the fit so we get a perfect fitting mortise. This one we're very done, pick a hole. Now you know you've got a good fitting mortise when you can do this. You can pick it up, dry, and it holds the weight. All right, so let's fine tune the rest of them. Take a shooting board. If you don't have one, you should make one. Shoulder plane, we take very little, or for each edge, go around, take about the same amount, and we test the fit as we go. Okay, just a little more, not quite there yet. Okay, there we go. Ten number two fit. We'll do the other two 
both cameras. Alright guys, after fitting the mortises and fitting the tenons on the top post, this is what the main lamp structure is going to look like. Okay. Everything holds together. This is all dry fit. So these, these are fitting nice and tight. Now before we do a glue up, there's a couple more things we have to do. One, we have to drill a hole through the center here, three eighths of an inch for the lamp post that we're going to store for the cord to come through for the lamp assembly. We have to put a curved detail from here to here. We also have to put a curved detail on the base from here to here. And then on the router table, we're actually going to route out a section from here to here on all four to give it a little bit of a lift so you have the feet touching the table and then some airspace underneath. Also a place for the cord to be after uh, you sit down on the table. After that, we'll get on to uh, making and cutting the veneers that are going to fill outside, inside, on the line. Okay, um, we're at the step now where we're going to take the base. We've already curved over the ends. Now we're going to route with the table a profile so that the, the cord will actually fit underneath the lamp once it's on the table. We set it up straight bit with stops at either end. We're going to do this in one pass, about an eighth of an inch. So let's go. So our bay is finished. We have to final sand it, glue it up, the rest of the pieces. When we're done with that, we'll be back and then we will uh, take you to the veneering process for the lampshade. So we'll see you in a little bit.